Hi everyone, I'm Mark. Um, today I'm talking about our tool called the test, uh, which we're developing in the Gellenborg lab at Harvard Medical School for visualization of single cell um, spatially resolved and multimodal data. Uh, so many labs and consortia are now generating a single cell a multimodal resolution data sets, um, which contain, um, they may contain transcriptomics data or chromatin accessibility data as well as imaging and microscopy data. And then many standardized pipelines are generating derived data types like um, dimensionality reductions, um, cell segmentations, or unsupervised clusterings, or cell type annotations. And um, while we have many tools for visualization of individual modalities like genome browsers and image viewers and scatterplot viewers, uh, we currently lack tools for integrative visualization of um, uh, multimodal data sets. And so this is highlighted by the Human Biomolecular Atlas program, which is generating hundreds of um, data sets across technologies and organs, uh, many of which are multimodal. And we want a unified framework to visualize these, um, for example, in the HubMap data portal um, uh, in, in a single tool. And so to address this uh, challenge, we're developing the TESS, which is a web-based um, interactive visualization framework for single cell data. And so the test is modular. So uh, depending on the data at hand or the particular technology and uh, modalities that result from it, you can configure the interface. Uh, so here we see a screenshot of a data set which has um, spatially resolved um, measurements. And so we have derived cell segmentations that we display over a microscopy image in the spatial view. Here we have um, alongside that uh, multiple dimensionality results that we display in multiple scatter plots. Um, we have the cell by gene expression matrix, which we display in a heat map. And then we can also show um, statistical plots uh, like uh, violin plots and histograms. And then we can control all of these visualization using um, these control components, which you see for changing image channels. Um, uh, selecting genes and selecting cell types. And so this um, tool does not require any specialized uh, server infrastructure, so it makes it easy to deploy and um, reduces um, cost of deployment. And then we have built a coordinate or built in um, a coordination model, uh, which enables relation of entities that are common across views, like, for example, if the same gene or cell type is shown, um, you can highlight that and, and that will be reflected across multiple views. Um, the test supports uh, use in data analysis environments in Python and R with Python and R packages. And then the test supports standard um, single cell data structures like AND data um, as well. And so not only can the test be used as a web application, it can also be embedded into other web applications as a React component. Um, as I said, it can be used in Python and R. So we have developed um, Jupyter widgets and um, R HTML widgets for using the test in R Studio and R Shiny apps. And then um, today, the test is being used um, in the HubMap data portal to visualize data from many technologies, uh, for example, microscopy data, transcriptomics, and chromatin accessibility data, as well as um, we have configured it for use with. Uh, specific technologies like the codex um, technology and others. Um, and so here I'll just show some examples of using the test in both in the HubMap data portal and um, as a standalone um, web tool. So here we see a data set in the um, HubMap data portal, which is uh, for light, light sheet microscopy data from the lymph node. and um, First, the data loads as a 2D um, image, but you can use this drop down to select a 3D um, rendering mode. And then the volume will load from an OME TIFF file. And then um, you can see and zoom and pan around this in the image viewer. And um, you can also change uh, rendering properties and select the maximum intensity projection, for example. Um, and we have sliders for changing the um, clipping planes, so you can view a smaller uh, portion of the volume. And um, here we zoom in, uh, or we clip along the z-axis. 
uh, you can also change the channel um, properties, like selecting um, a quantitative color map. And this is all um, uh, rendered in the browser on the fly from the image file. Um, and so as another use case, I'll show a configuration of a test with an ATAC-seq data set. So here, rather than an, than an image viewer, we see the test um, uh, configured to show a genome browser. And this can be linked to a scatter plot to show a dimensionality reduction. And so here, each um, track in the genome browser represents the chromatin accessibility profile of a particular um, cell cluster. And we have uh, a control on the bottom right to select and um, uh, uh, filter al uh, along those clusters. And so here, as we zoom in along the genome browser, um, additional data and um, gene annotations will load um, automatically. And um, we see that the clusters um, are linked across the genome browser and the scatter plot. And we can also show the cluster names. And we see that additional data has loaded. And then we can select clusters and see that they're highlighted um, in both um, or in all the plots. Um, for single cell RNA-seq data, you might want to show the dimensionality reduction in the scatter plot and um, select a particular gene, which can um, uh, then be mapped to the color on the scatter plot. So here we um, have a data set in, from uh, the lymph node, and we select the gene CD79A. And we see that this gene is highly expressed in um, a few clusters, particularly 0 and 1 here. Um, for a codex data set, we can see that there are cell segmentations overlaid on um, a multiplexed image. We can also select a gene here and see that the colors are mapped on top of the cell segmentation data. And we can use the channel controls um, uh, to, to look at the underlying image. Uh, for image data, we can also um, add and remove channels and change their color map. And here, as we zoom in along the image, um, higher resolution data will also load. Um, OK, so I showed you many ways that Vitesse is being used now in the HubMap data portal. Um, but we're uh, actively working on this project and um, extending it for other use cases, for example, um, to better support multimodal data structures, uh, to support large MERFISH data sets with millions of transcripts and hundreds of fields of view. And we're integrating the test with statistical and machine uh, learning methods. Um, more specifically, we're working to support the MU data um, standard uh, format for multimodal data sets. Um, we're making performance optimizations for the spatial and imaging view. And we're building um, new views for multi data set and comparison tasks, um, uh, which I'll also be um, presenting some of our work on in the Biovis um, on, uh, in a few days. And so to build a test visualization, um, if your data is already in formats that are compatible with R and Python um, analysis packages, um, you probably want to start there. Um, and so uh, you can use Vitesse within a Jupyter notebook, um, first by importing the functions. And then you can, uh, here we load uh, the data set into an AND data object, and then we configure the test by um, passing in that object and then specifying the views and the layout that we that we want. And then we finally um, render the widget into our notebook with the widget function. And um, uh, this would be a video, but I think you can um, view um, some examples online since the, the video size was too large here. But uh, we support OME TIFF um, images in both Python and R packages, and then we have um, functions for loading and data, um, Loom and Snap Tools objects in Python, and then Surat single cell experiment and Kyoto objects in R. Um, these packages contain functions for exporting your visualization to the cloud. So to do this, uh, you can export to AWS S3, for example, and then um, you can generate a URL to save or share your visualization with um, collaborators. And so Vitesse is built with open source tools. Um, the genome browser is built using the high glass um, library developed by our lab. 
and the image viewer is built using the Viv library, also developed by our lab. And then the statistical visualizations are implemented using the Vega Lite um, grammar. And so if you would like to learn more, you can um, visit Vitesta.io, where you'll find installation and uh, data preparation instructions, as well as tutorials and links to example notebooks. And then um, we also have a plugin API, which is um, relatively new, where we document how to um, write your own plugin. And then we've uh, uh, also written a roadmap and um, described some of the planned features um, there as well. So I'd like to thank the other members of the Gellenborg Lab, as well as the funding that makes this um, project possible. And um, thank you. <laughs> If not, I have a question of my own. Uh, so what are some of the data sources that you use? Uh, so data you integrate multiple sources, right? So right. So most of the data is um, like uh, process data. So if you've already run like a uh, a pipeline to generate like cell type annotations, for example, we can display those. And then um, um, like the data can be stored in like object storage systems like Amazon S3, or it can be um, uh, just stored using a static web server and loaded that way. So there's no, um, yeah. And, and we support like standard image formats like OME, TIFF and, um, and data um, and um, it can, you can kind of integrate it pretty easily with like um, data portals and things like that, given the, the, the um, support for the uh, static files. Hi, Gary Tom. Hi. Um, so how does it handle large data streams? So if you were to launch this on the server and you access um, this remotely, so, cause I know uh, similar to the party, it has some issues and discussions around what's the best way to do that. Yeah, so so currently we um, use the czar um, uh, like compressed and chunked um, array format to, to load large data sets. So for example, if your cell by gene matrix is um, like hundreds of thousands of cells by thousands of genes, um, uh, basically we compress and, and chunk it into like um, uh, smaller files that can then be easily loaded by a web browser. Um, so if you, um, and we use the same method for, for images. So we use like pyramidal representations where if you zoom in to the image, um, high resolution data will load. Um, I guess the problem with the uh, gene expression matrix is like, there's no clear ordering. So you can't exactly do that pyramidal um, uh, conversion, but um, um, it, it works at least in our experience for, for pretty large expression matrices. Um, uh, and yeah, we have some examples in the HubMap consortium, but um, we're actively like looking at at ways to to handle that problem. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And so, I have one question uh, regarding like what is the things in Vitis which is makes people use it and uh, do not use like Sylvain? What is kind of features? you have it that is not in the survey team and uh, is it easy to like if i have the my h5d object is it easy to just switch between the two visualization and method or you have another format right so um so i think that the advantage is at least currently over cell by gene is that um we support like um viewing like dimensionality reductions alongside your spatial and imaging data, as well as um, potentially like chromatin accessibility with a genome browser. So really supporting these multimodal um, use cases where you wanna relate your like transcriptomic data and um, other data modalities um, like in the same um, interactive viewer, but um, like cell by gene does have support for like uh, di uh, differential expression testing, which um, we currently don't support, but are looking at supporting in the future. And if you're within a Jupyter notebook, 
you could um, like perform a dimensional or sorry a differential express uh, expression test in your notebook and then um, view the results in in the test potentially. But um, um, I think your second question was about H five AD files. We have um, so if you are in a, a Python notebook, you can uh, load your um, AND data object from the H five AD file and then um, pass that. And data object into the test, and it will automatically uh, uh, do some data conversion. We we do convert it like in the background for you to this czar format to load um, using web technologies. Um, but I, I have seen uh, other work where they are loading like uh, H5 um, files like directly in a web browser. So um, we're looking at uh, supporting that in the future. But we currently uh, do some conversion in the background. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Um, a question regarding the uh, file simulation. So, what's the largest data set that you can visualize in terms of the data cell? I think we have ex an example on our website with, um, um, I think, 200,000 cells and um, uh, I think hundreds of genes. I think we have other examples where we have like 20,000 genes and maybe like 10,000 cells. Um, but for images, we can um, visualize like hundreds of gigabytes um, uh, um, uh, um, when they're in this pyramidal representation. So you're just downloading the parts that you're actively viewing at the current resolution. So thank you. Hi, I'm Ravi from New York Genome Center. I think the advanced question. So have you tried genome sketching algorithms? Because frankly you're limited to 20,000, but if you sketch them down, then figure out what would be the low dimension embedding and just project them to like all you need is pictures you have embedding to display, right? So you can scale it to billions of steps also, right? So have you tried? Uh, we haven't tried it, but that's definitely something. Yeah, we should definitely look into that. Also, um, like even performing maybe we like uh, some like lossy compression of like a, for example a uh, cell by gene um, matrix. But I think that would require maybe like some user studies and and like um, definitely like showing to the like the user and communicating that that type of um, like some information might be lost if we were to do something like that, but um, but yeah, I, I think there are many ways you can you can kind of approach this issue. So thank you. Hi, 